What's up, Raider Nation? Bringing you your weekend Raider Act show. i um, just going to wait a few minutes, let people come on. <whistles> Hope you guys are having a good we weekend. It's really muggy and rainy here, so... Hey, you lady. Hey, how's it going? Good. How's your weekend? Um, it's been busy so far, but good. Yeah, life is crazy. It is. You should do a fashion We don't have show. anybody on yet. <laughs> I was waiting, so I don't know. I guess we'll just start. Eh, we can wait until we get, like, a person on here. At least one. I mean, come on. <laughs> Somebody watch us. Damn it. Hello. Okay, there's Hector. <laughs> oh. Yay, we have one visitor. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, we have four, two. Okay, fine. Anyways, <laughs> let's just go. Let's go. Okay. So let's start off with the Gruden and Reggie conversation. Oh, for the season ticket holders. Yep. What was your favorite? So, there was a lot of it that I like. Uh, person asked Reggie, because your son plays on the Queeves. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Um, who do you think is going to win? And would you go for your son's team? And he, his comeback was really funny. I loved his comeback. His comeback was, say? I think he said something to the effect like, um, it's a game and I love my son and everything, but. I think I would still go for the Raiders. Well, he's got to. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's your team. They pay your bills. Right? <laughs> they paid for your son to go to college. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so, uh, that's, yeah, that's exciting. Which one was your favorite? I really liked, I was going to look up the, um, the actual comments because... He said some stuff about, oh gosh, what did he say? He said some stuff about Christian Hackenberg, which is, oh yeah, I, I thought it was cool. Um, he also talked about like Eddie Pinero and the battle on the kicker side of it, which is, I'm really, I'm really scared because I love, 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 love Giorgio Tavecchio. Love him. I think he's great, but it looks to me like Gruden might. Um, might not hold him on. <laughs> he's he's going to have a tough time staying on, on the roster is what it sounds like because of the fact that uh, we picked up Johnny Townsend and then we picked up, <clears throat> excuse me, Eddie Pinero in as an undrafted free agent. And those two were teammates. So he's used to holding. <laughs> Johnny Townsend is used to being down there getting a ball for – or for uh, Eddie Pinero, and uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of left kicker holder experience. So it's kind of not boating well for, <laughs> for poor Papa G. I feel so bad. This, this guy has, like, been dedicated to this team. I think he spent, what, the last four off seasons just coming back, watching the show, kicking in preseason – going to OTAs and all that stuff just to get cut at, you know, at the beginning of the season because Seabass was always there and he was always the one that they were going to go to. There's no question about it. And then he got lucky because last year Seabass was out. So he got the call and he did a good job. Come on. Like he, had, he set a record. He hit two 52-yard field goals in the first two kicks ever. That's pretty damn impressive. All right, come on. I like the guy. Personally, yeah. I like him, and I I don't think Gruden's going to keep him. 
but I don't know. Maybe he'll nail all his kicks and and Eddie will have a bad day or something. But yeah, right. it's not looking good. I think he'll get picked <laughs> up pretty, pretty quickly. I, I don't think it's gonna uh, shoot. The Chargers will probably take him in a heartbeat. Um, they they have a hard time with kickers, right? If anybody knows, <laughs> their <laughs> kicker last year. Well, I think it was his pun- the punter actually. He missed the net on the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed it, but, um, oh, I found the Reggie quote. Here it is. He says, even though it's my boy, it's still Raiders versus Chiefs on that yep. day. I'm yep. happy and proud of him at this point, but on game day, it is what it is. That rivalry will never end, and he knows that. Yep. He's being indoctrinated in Kansas City in that regard. It was great seeing him get drafted, but it's going to be fun when we play each other. <laughs> yeah, Reg- yeah, he said, it is what it is. It is what it is. Sorry. He's my kid. <laughs> Love him. Hope he does bad. <laughs> but he, they moved him to offensive lineman this year, so we'll see what he does. Yeah. I don't like the idea of having rookie offensive linemen, but I think they can work out, so I, I hope he does horribly. <laughs> <laughs> At least for the first three years. Then he can do better wherever he goes, if he goes somewhere else. Right. Um, I wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat has been dry all day long. It is freezing cold up here. I am not happy about it at all. I don't know how you do it. Mm, I don't either. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> I have to. It's a forced thing. For so those of you who don't while you're looking for that, uh, Gruden also said in that conference that we're going to see more of um, Amari Cooper in 2018. I hope so. I hope so, too. They have a whole new strength and conditioning team. Um, Their coaching staff is leagues better, light years better than it has been. Right. Pretty much all country. I mean, (laughs) we can can call it that. Um, But... uh, I think strength and and conditioning has a lot to do with why there are so many injuries in the league these days, because (laughs) 30 years ago, how many guys went out every single week? Those are guys, those guys didn't have to follow a CBA guidelines. So I think the CBA should be, should be torn up and burned all at the same time, but um, they need more practice. When the Seahawks were their best a few years ago, that's when Pete Carroll got fined for having two a days, but they were at their top game. They were as good as you could get for the Seahawks. So uh, it's just, it's disappointing. It, it's not doing the players any good. It's not doing the coaches any good. The team overall is is suffering because of it. So get rid of the CBA, not doing you any good. Right. Screw on your team. Yeah. And until they get some better um until they get used to doing more conditioning work then they're not gonna they're not gonna do well hector we have to mention some things <laughs> right sea chickens <laughs> yeah we don't like them but um but i mean it, it, it's it was a good example of why the why this conditioning works so well and why it's so important so I had to talk about them. Just had to. And the queen. I had to yeah. bring that up because that, that was so yeah. funny. That's not talking nice about them though. So it's okay. <laughs> You're not saying anything good. <laughs> uh, they also got Christian Hackenberg. Ugh. I have no idea. why. Hi, JR. Um, Christian Hackenberg. <laughs> First of all, he looks like he's 12. I feel, I, poor kid. <laughs> He's never going to get into a bar. Um, so John Gruden has a, a really interesting history picking up interesting or being interested in strange quarterback options. Uh, he was, he loved Johnny Manziel. That's fine. Let me ask you a question. Who didn't love Johnny Manziel that year? Right. He was one of the top, one of the top quarterback uh, prospects coming out of the draft. So stop it. It's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let's just get over that, get past it. Just like the 1998 comment. Nah, we're done with that. Broken <laughs> record. Um, but he said 
you know, we're looking for players. We're looking to get better every day. And Christian Hackenberg was available. He was a second round pick. He did some really encouraging things at Penn State. Yeah, I was he reading had some that. ups and downs. We're going to look at him and we're going to make it very competitive to see who Derek, Derek Carr's backup is. And that's really what it's about. <laughs> Who's Derek Carr's backup? As we can't get Nick Foles, and there's really not there, that many backup quarterbacks that are Nick Foles. So I can't think of one, personally. But <laughs> under the right tutelage, he might he might do well. I'm not holding my breath. I don't. <laughs> it's it, it's it, this is uh, this is competition. That's what it is. So if he comes in and he does well, great. That's great. It's wonderful. Connor Cook has not done anything, in my opinion. Um, I don't think he has the leadership skills to be able to run this team or a team. Period. Um, but you never know. You never know what somebody's going to somebody's going to do. I think E.G. Emanuel has served as a decent backup. Hopefully Derek Carr doesn't ever go down and he doesn't have to see the field. So, but given the fact that the last couple of years, Derek's had a couple of injury issues, we have to have somebody back there. That's solid. Yeah. Dan cook is, yeah. we'll see. He's still got another, what year on his rookie contract, two years. Didn't, I can't didn't they move him? Didn't we move him? Yeah. Isn't he like a cornerback or something right now? No. <laughs> Connor but, Cook? Yeah. Um, in the uh, OTA practice, they put him in a corner. Oh. <laughs> I oh, don't wow. know. I don't know if they're just doing that to see what he can do <laughs> or what. They're probably seeing if he has any talent anywhere. Right. He was a good, he has a good arm, but he's not a quarterback. He's yeah, not an NFL quarterback. He definitely maybe stinks. He can, <laughs> and maybe he can go to Canada where they're a lot nicer and he doesn't have to be so bossy and so <laughs> aggressive. But probably not. <laughs> I'm going to say probably uh, I like the idea of Connor Cook. Um, I don't like the idea of Connor Cook. Let me say that. But I think that Gruden likes the idea of Connor Cook because he likes the idea of um, – of Carr being a mentor. So he has a young guy who he can mentor. EJ is kind of already set in his ways. He's kind of already got his, his game style. Um, so he's probably not, you know, he's not, he's not going to work with him too much on what he needs to do. He's not going to force him to work under Carr um, for training purposes, but Connor Cook is kind of like that. I mentioned in, in something I wrote that he's kind of like that quarterback clay that, John Gruden likes to have. He enjoys those. <laughs> oh, Dan, you're you are right. Yeah, they moved uh Jared Cook to cornerback. Uh, that makes more sense. Yeah. Slightly more sense. Well, I was just like reading through it really quick because I was rushing. Yeah. yeah, Hector, he's not developed, and I think that's why Gruden wants him to. I think that's why he, Gruden would like the idea of having him um, under Carr because he'll he'll learn everything he needs to learn. Carr's a great, great quarterback, and um, he'll be able to do something with him maybe between yeah. him and Gruden. Yeah. Dan, do you mean FSU? Oh, loved Cook. Sorry, I thought you said Carr. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Gruden has loved a lot of quarterbacks coming out of the draft, but until you get them on a, an NFL field and see what they can do. And like he said in, um, in that interview, he said, you know, basically without, without the right, the right guidance and the right um, coaching, a quarterback isn't going to do anything at all. So potential doesn't mean anything in the NFL. Not until you prove it. Your turn. Okay, so um, yeah, during okay, so uh, I don't know if you can look it up really quick. I don't have my computer up, but uh, read the question that someone brought up that Gruden's more technology sound and he knows good plays. 
What was his comeback to that? Oh, are you talking about when they went to the owner's meeting? No, when the ticket holder, uh, whatchamacallit. Oh, well, I'd have to look that up, but I don't think Gruden's concerned about tech stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't care. Somebody said this week that he, uh, he certainly did take the game back to 1998. And I suppose, I mean, that's not a bad thing because of what he's done. The, the personnel he's put together is pretty damn impressive. I mean, look at the packages he's going to be able to, to run with all of this. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. I am excited to see the defensive line this year. The front seven. I think it's going to be ugly. Stay tuned. It'll yeah. be fun. Oh, man. Are we the only team that is going to use a fullback this year? I think we are one of the few teams that's going to properly use a fullback. They're not meant to be primary running backs. And there are a lot of teams that – I don't know why they, they make these hybrid positions and they don't have these traditional roles for um, the – I mean, they're – really two hybrid positions in the NFL and it's tight end and it's fullback and a fullback is supposed to be a primary blocker and they're supposed to be a lead runner and they can, they can take the ball and they can run it back. But um, primarily they're supposed to be a, a, a pair. They pair up with their running back and they, yeah, Jason, they're head smashers. And they open holes, and they're supposed to be the big ones that – I mean, Marshawn Lynch could be, like, a perfect fullback, but he needs the ball way too much. <laughs> right. I take that away from him. And tight ends, why do we use a tight end as a primary receiver? I don't know. I, I understand that they're much bigger, and they can run over cornerbacks a lot easier than your primary receivers normally would, but the tight ends have a lot more responsibility than most of them are being played for. Um, Gronk is a great receiver, but he's also a great blocker. So he's he's got that kind of traditional tight end um, uh, skill set, and a lot of them don't, though. I see a lot of them that are just used as a big primary receiver, and they're just used to go and knock people over. So Raiders should play Lynch in Skittles. <laughs> I don't know what that means, Danny, but um, I don't want to see any sort of naked pictures of Lynch in a big bowl of Skittles or anything like that. <laughs> it's no. Yeah, Jason, I agree. We should keep a blocking tight end in. Um, <coughs> Lee Smith is a great blocking tight end, and he had some some really cool receptions last year. Um, in preseason, he had one that was, I mean, it was it was really impressive. I liked it. But it was preseason, so, I mean, it was the first game, though, I think. I can't remember. But he, uh, yeah, he did a good job. <clears throat> so he's an option. So if they do, like, a, a double tight end set, he's a great blocker. Put in Jared Cook as a great receiver and swap them. So Lee Smith can, can receive some. Jared Cook can do some blocking. Uh, Cook was actually a really good blocking tight end before um, he – kind of made an adjustment when he got to Green Bay. So he's got the skills. He's just been focusing way too much on his receiving because he knew that in Green Bay, he was going to have to be more of a receiver. So I like the idea of putting him, putting him in there. I like the idea of playing those two not necessarily <coughs> interchangeably. Um, but yeah, Jason, we'd have to see how he blocks, but it's a skill set he needs to work on and he definitely can. He's got the right, the right opportunity now to be able to do that. Um, but without, you know, given the option to work on it, maybe that's why he was playing in cornerback position. <laughs> it'll give him, <laughs> it'll definitely give him some more uh, experience and another aspect of the game, I guess. Okay, so here is a comment. 
I'm old school, but that doesn't mean I'm a fool. What? Gruden is crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was it. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's what he said. Sounds like a Gruden comment to me. I started cracking I up when I read that. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> He's not an idiot, people. Come on. <laughs> You think they'll run the jumbo again? I don't know if Kirkland's going to make it, but they might. He doesn't have to be like, if they have three, are you talking about three tight ends? Jason, Jason Dean. They could play four. I think they'd be good. I think they're probably going to carry more than people think they are. They're going to take at least three on the roster and they'll have one or two on practice squad. But I have a different opinion than a lot of people on how many, um, how many weapons they're gonna carry in the season for Derek Carr, because I think it's gonna be a lot more than people expect. Shannon Sharp is an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Danny posted that, um, what do you say? Shannon Sharp was saying that John Gruden was not tech savvy on his show. That's because Shannon Sharp is an idiot and he doesn't like John Gruden and that's okay. But he's, I, I can't take anything Shannon Sharp says unless it's with a, a dozen grains of salt, I guess. Um, I don't, I don't trust anything he says. Skip and Shannon. I used to love watching the show cause it was fun and it was stupid and it was interesting, but it's gotten so just low budget, low class. I don't know. Hi, Daniel. He is an idiot. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad you're with me, Danny. There was a, let me talk about this for a minute. Colin Cowherd, speaking of idiots, Colin Cowherd came out with, uh, that's a terrible, terrible intro. Uh, he came out with his top 10 quarterback, or excuse me, it was the two-tiered quarterback list. And I was just disappointed. He put, okay, first of all, Ben Roethlisberger is no longer a top-tier quarterback. Nope, not at all. Give me a friggin' break. He might have been about 10 years ago, but not now. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> Colin, Colin put, yes, Colin Cowturd, that's fine. That works too. Uh, <laughs> he put Tom Brady, okay, Drew Brees, mm -hmm, Aaron Rodgers, sure, and Ben Roethlisberger as the four top tier quarterbacks. I don't know what he was smoking before he did that, <laughs> but it was something. Um, and then the tier two, these ones really get me. Russell Wilson, as far as I'm concerned, Russell Wilson is one of the best quarterbacks in the league right now. Right. That guy can turn shit into Shinola. It's he did everything last year without an offensive line. So I'm impressed. The Seahawks are lucky to have him. So I think if anybody should be in the top tier, it should be him. Not Ben, not Ben Roethlisberger. No. Right. Um, <laughs> Andrew Luck. What? How is Andrew Luck in a, in a discussion about anything ever? <laughs> right? He hasn't thrown a ball in more than two years. And the last time he did throw a ball, it was one of the little mini Nerf balls. Okay. He can't even throw a full football yet. Colin, give me a break. Jesus. Oh gosh. Anyways. So here's the ones that round out the, uh, his tier two quarterbacks. Russell, Andrew Luck. Carson Wentz, Matt Ryan, Cam Newton, Philip Rivers, Matthew Stafford, Derek Carr, and Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo, who's played played like eight minutes. I know. <laughs> I, I I think Jimmy Garoppolo has all the potential in the world, but like I said, potential means nothing in the NFL. He's done a great job. He is the only undefeated starting quarterback in the league, but that's in like seven games. <laughs> Luck had bad luck with injuries because Luck hat is on a team that doesn't care about getting him protection. 
Jim Irsay has not done a good job over there. He doesn't seem to give a damn about having a franchise quarterback because he doesn't have an O-line. They drafted an O-lineman this year, and that's only one. <laughs> you need five. You got to have more than just the one. Sorry, I'm having to adjust my phone a lot. Um, and T.Y. Hilton can't carry the entire load for the entire – the entire offense. So um, Frank Gore did a good job last year, but Frank Gore's like 485 years old. So um, <laughs> we'll see what he does in, in Miami this year. I hope he does well because I really like Frank Gore as soon as he left San Francisco. Right. Uh, but they're doing such a poor job. Oh, God. They're just doing a horrible job. I think Cleveland is run better than the Colts right now. I, I I agree. He might be 486, Danny. I'm not sure when his birthday is. <laughs> he is Methuselah. <laughs> so didn't we talk about records last week? Because I'm excited. Yeah. I want to say we did, but I'm, I'm excited. The more I see in OTAs, the more excited I get. Because... Right the guys were doing some big work in OTAs. It's awesome. I know. I'm I loving it. Get on the field. I'm loving it. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into that. OTAs? Mm-hmm. All right. So, first, first. What are your thoughts on Penn? I don't like him. I don't. I don't know. I understand he's the veteran that we got right now, but he's coming off an injury. Um, he's coming off an attitude problem. And <laughs> I, I don't think he makes it. I think if, if the other tackles on the line do really well, even the rookies, they're going to do great. They're going to, they're, they're going to drop pen in a heartbeat. So, I don't know how much dead money he has though. I'd have to look that up. So um, right. he got a new contract last year and then he kind of, played like shit so but he was battling an injury that's I have to be fair about that Danny on his contract um he's still sitting out right now as of right now he's still waiting for Max this. gonna get a contract don't be worried don't be upset don't be concerned that he's not showing up to voluntary practices he'll get a contract it's just a matter of Reggie working numbers because right. they're going to cut a lot more people before the end of, of um, preseason. And there's going to be a lot more money freed up. And um, he already knows probably, you know, has an idea at least of, of a general salary amount that, um, that they're going to cut to free up. But Mac's going to command probably $20 million a year. He's making almost fourteen this year. So... That's a lot of money. It's a lot of contract that he has to put together. So Reggie's going to do it. He just needs to, he needs time to do it. No question though. Max going to be a Raider. Right. Don't be scared. I don't have any like bad feelings and I believe the contract will follow through before the first game. Yeah. But filling in for Mac right now, I'm sorry. I looked him up and I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> is Cardian Brown and uh, the rookie. PJ Hall? Oh, what's his name? No, Key. Oh, Arden Key. Yeah. Arden Key is impressive. Yeah, I, I hope that he... Cause, because everybody's like, well, he was our third round pick, so we just picked him up. But that man, oh, he's a good player. He's good. He is. He's great. And he'll be fantastic on the field. It's just the problem that that everybody had with him was his off the field issues. But he he has a pretty good big brother there. Bruce Irvin already made no bones about the fact that he's not going to get in trouble off the field. Right. So yeah. they're going to make him into into a superstar. Hi, Bob. You got you to gotta look at some of the pictures from OTAs, too, because Maurice Hurst, 
<laughs> you got to do the rookie duty and carry all the helmets. I know. I seen that. <laughs> that was a, a great picture. That was I so loved good. <laughs> and watching Deuce Gruden on the field next to these guys is hilarious because <laughs> he's like five foot five, but he's like mini Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. <laughs> hilarious to watch him because he's Danny, bigger than every right. single person. He's, he was our yes, third round yes. pick, but he has, oh, God, that boy has some talent. We picked up two first round talents in low draft positions. And so you know what that means? It's low draft or low position, low risk, low risk, high reward. Yeah, right. That's probably what we're going to see. Um, they've got the right makeup to do, to put this defense together finally. Raiders need a defense. Right. We definitely we need them. We have one superstar player, <laughs> according to the last few years. And now Bruce Irvin's in the right spot. Now we've got Arden Key and, and Maurice Hurst are going to make a complete difference definitely. on that line. I think P.J. Hall's going to do a pretty good job, too. But he's probably not going to be a um, – probably not going to be – a starter for a while he might go in in some packages but um yeah I, I don't I I think he's still gonna he's gonna train and be one of the best one of the best pickups that we we have and yes Michael I believe that Mo, Mo Hurst can be a rookie of the year I think everybody's gonna eat their words they're gonna feel stupid they look wait. foolish You're fools <laughs> all of you fools <laughs> Right now, as it stands, our line looks pretty good. Um, at the right defensive end, we've got Mario Edwards Jr., who's got the potential. He's got skills. He He's shown skills, but I don't think he's had support at all. Um, and then his backups are Tank Carradine and, and Fatal Brown, which Tank Carradine, I guess uh, when he was with San Francisco, he's really exciting, but he just didn't come through. He wasn't able to put it on the field. So um, so left D tackle, this is where I'm really excited because that's where Mo Hurst is going to line up. Eddie Vanderdose is the starter so far. I'm looking at the depth chart from ourlads.com. So oh, okay. um, they, and this adjusts all the time, but they generally don't put a rookie as first team until, unless there's nobody else in that position, like our punter. So <laughs> that's pretty, that's all we got. Uh, they do have Colton Miller as a starting right tackle though. Anyway, back to defense. Cause I love defense. Uh, nose tackle is going to be a fun battle to watch too. Cause it's going to be jelly versus art and key. So I'm excited to see jelly's got to, he's got to get his shit together. Otherwise he is not going anywhere because right? if, if art and key does ball out, like he, like he has the potential to do, like he totally can, and I expect him to do. Jelly's going to be out of a job. I don't know why they gave him a contract extension. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, he, oh, I can't wait to see it. Oh. Probably because Danico Autry left, and that was a huge hit. Danico yeah. Autry had a great year last year, uh, and I was really disappointed that he left. But yeah. it is what it is. And of course, on the left, um, no, I was wrong. PJ Hall's going to, PJ Hall's going to be the one fighting with Jelly, but I still think he can do a better job. Um, I think PJ Hall's had some, he's from a small school, but some of those small school guys are just, they have a chip on their shoulder and they're ready to do it. A right? lot of, a lot of great superstar players came from small schools, like Jerry Rice. I don't remember where he came from, but it was a tiny little school. <laughs> So you definitely have potential there, but Mac and his backup is Arden Key and Arden Key, he could play on either side of the line. He'll be fine. So he might even get, give Mario Edwards a run for his own money there. So we'll see. I'm excited about those rookies, but yeah, our front seven is going to look ugly. Linebackers, we got Bruce Irvin, T. Her Whitehead and... A few other options. We'll see how that, that weak side linebacker goes, but 
I think they have enough to be able to spread it around. If they move Derek Johnson or if they move to your Whitehead, that's three pretty solid uh, uh, starting linebackers. Mississippi Value. Thank you, Danny. I appreciate that. Yeah, it was a very, very somewhere. tiny school. <laughs> yeah. God only, that's what talent does. That's where potential exceeds your talent or does the, your talent exceeds what you were even expected to do in the NFL. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. The, the front seven is going to be head and shoulders above what it's been. Now the secondary, the secondary has <laughs> been fun to watch, I guess. I, I see pictures and I see, you know, updates from the OTAs and stuff. And, um Gruden's been running with the offense and with the defense so he's getting in there and he's you know he's putting his feet down getting his getting his hands dirty and it's obvious he wants to make this team work so I am worried about our secondary though I mean do you really think that our cornerbacks set up good I think that we've got We've got some much better options at our cornerback positions. It's just a matter of getting Conley up to speed. And I think he can. I think he's got the right coaches in position right now. And he's apparently, I mean, looking at him on the field, he's come back really, really strong from his, uh, his injury. And um, there's some other, there's some other guys there that are really, really, really high potential guys. Uh, Rashawn Melvin. Melvin yeah, yeah, Rashawn Melvin, I think, is a much better, much better cornerback than people are giving him credit for. He had a baller year in Indianapolis. How do you do that? You got to be good. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think, I think we're going to see much improvement. I'm not, not going to put too much stock into it yet. A lot of people think that Carl Joseph's a bust, which is just ridiculous. But he's been injured, too. He was injured in, in his rookie season, and he hasn't been playing at full speed since then. And then they ask him to cover people like Hunter Henry, who's a tight end, seven inches taller than him. And, and that, that doesn't work. Uh, he, he's a bulldog, and he's a ball hawk. But, um, yeah, he's, he's, much be he's got more, much more potential than people give him credit for. If they move him to free safety, we're going to see all. And Reggie Nelson, Reggie Nelson. Everybody loves Reggie Nelson, right? Captain Jack better not be watching. He's going to turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think we've got some potential. There's Marcus Gilchrist in um, the second position at free safety. And there's a couple of different, uh, there's several options. Several options. They're going to do a lot of shifting around. They're going to move people. You know, it's going to be based on how everybody does in, in practices, of course. But this is a really good time. Yeah, Hunter is out for the season. I'm not going to say I'm excited about that, but uh, <laughs> what are they going to do? I don't know what the Chargers are going to do. They just lost. They lost their two best tight ends already. For, yeah. I mean, they should not have let Antonio Gates walk but they did yeah I bet you the minute Hunter Henry pulled that that uh where's his ACL I think I bet you the minute he did they were on the phone Antonio are you bored yet <laughs> don't you want to come back it's really nice here you see movie stars it's all great yeah anyways so we'll see how the Chargers do this year but I think they have enough talent to probably still pull out some really big wins yeah. Because their defense is really good. So, I don't know. What are you excited about? I'm excited for the first game. <laughs> I'm like, I want to watch the football. Other than that, Damn it. Yeah, Gates was uh, considering retiring, Danny, but he didn't technically retire. He just, they just didn't pick him up for the season. They didn't renew his contract. So he's free. I mean, not free, of course, but <laughs> he's available. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet that, um, hey, Paul's watching. Maybe Detroit will pick him up. That would be exciting. 
my friend Paul is a, a Lions fan, so um, yeah, the Lions have had some struggles at tight end, so that might, hey, why not? If he doesn't go back to the Chargers, what the hell? Right? Good time. So secondary, I'm still nervous about, but I think there's a much better pool of talent there. Front seven, can't wait. I know. And games are won in front seven. That's where it starts. Yeah, so he's a free me, agent. Yeah. Yes, he's a free agent. <laughs> He was wandering around doing nothing, which is a shame because Antonio Gates is one of the best tight ends ever. <laughs> oh, he has some good talent. That's for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great. He was great. He's the, what is he? He's the touchdown leader for tight ends, I think, now. Um, but front, yeah, front seven. I keep getting distracted. Stop talking about things, people. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're always taking suggestions. Big L said that we blocked him. Apparently. I know. I don't know. I can't get into it because I'm busy right now. Yeah. So that front seven is where we're going to win and lose games, I think. That's where we won and lost games last year because we had we had some talent there, but we didn't have a t any talent in the secondary last year. And if our run blocking isn't there, and if our pass rush isn't there, our secondary has to do that job, and they weren't doing that job. We didn't have the safety talent or the <coughs> guidance, because Rod, Rod Woodson can eat a dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we know how she feels. That is how I feel. He was a great player, amazing, but his coaching skills were just bleh. word vomit. That's all it was. Raiders did not consider Megatron last season. Raiders brought him in as a guest coach. That is it. There was never any talk of signing him. Never any talk of, of keeping him on the team. And um, he didn't even consider coming out of retirement. There was no question about that. It would have been interesting. It would have been great. Because I think it would have been fun, but uh, yeah, there, that wasn't an option. He only came over because it was a John, John Pagano he had a history with or somebody. I don't know. I've blocked last season out of my mind so much. It's not yeah. even funny. Even I'm not very high. high. What was that? I said, I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. Um, I'm not very high on Eddie Vanderdust either, Bob, but apparently he's been doing really good things and he's been coming back from his injury really well um so we'll see but i wouldn't be surprised to see him lose his starting position he'd be a really good depth player though and i think they're going to put out a lot of different defensive looks this year so okay. they might run a lot more five or six or seven guys in the box they might run a 5-2 defense they might run a 4-4-1 four, four, so, you know whatever Four two one. I don't know. I think we'll see a lot more nickelbacks though, and maybe a lot more dimebacks. I don't know if Gates is done yet, Jonathan, because um, <laughs> San Diego needs a tight end. <laughs> Where the hell they're at this week? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He might. He might get a job back. He might get his job back. We'll see. So. I'm excited for the first game, too, but you can't yeah. look that far ahead. Are we 100 days away from, from preseason? I can't wait. Kickoff? I, can't, I can't remember, but I can't wait either. So exciting. I know. Oh. I was really like, excited last year, too, though. So <laughs> I was, too. It's like waiting for Christmas when you're a kid. I'm like, come on, hurry yeah. up. <laughs> come on. Do it. <laughs> okay, so let's touch up on um, the – Kickoff rules. Oh, gosh. Kickoff rules. <laughs> you know, they're just so stupid. I, I, I don't, I don't understand why they're, why they're making changes like this because it's essentially you're handcuffing the offense a little bit more. Um, hi, princess. Welcome hi. in. Hopefully you like the Raiderette show. Uh, 
they're they're handcuffing the the offense a little bit because they're making them they can't line up behind uh, they can't line up what five yards behind they have to only line up one yard behind right and um it's so ridiculous i can't i i they put they put five players outside of the where is it that was one that bothered me um the kickoff team cannot line up more than one yard from restraining line which is the kickoff line um Last year, it was no more than five yards, so you got a running start. Right now, gunners are just completely useless, unless they're really fast. So you're essentially handing the receiving team a lot more yardage. And I think that's, uh, I, I don't not know. Fair. It's, it's not fair. Whoever they, made that rule up is a jackass. <laughs> yeah, they screwed defense out of out of so many options, opportunities. It's a quarterback league, and it's bullshit hate it and i'm i can't wait to see what they do with the pass interference rule because if they take it away from a spot penalty um that would be great i would be fine with that right but i mean yeah it has to be you have to be blatant about it come on it's not like you can just touch a guy and he goes you (laughs) you can touch them just let's be clear with that. You can touch them. You just cannot prevent them from catching the ball. You can't touch their arms. That doesn't help. Don't grab their stuff, jerseys, or anything else. That did not come out right. I apologize. <laughs> but yes, you can touch them when you're when you're a defender. I mean, the cornerbacks do it all the time. Um, uh, Darius Slay, one of the best cornerbacks in the league. He's in my top one, at least. In, for me, I don't know. <laughs> I consider him to be probably the best cornerback in the league. Um, and he he's on a team that that he needs to be the best cornerback. But he will actually, you know, keep his hands like around a waist. He doesn't do anything. He's just tracking. That's that's press coverage. He's tracking what his receiver is doing. He can feel if he turns. He can feel if he moves. He can feel if he's rotating or trying to pull away. And he's fast. But there's always a receiver that's faster. There's always going to be one. But when you're touching someone and you know what they're doing, you can feel what their movements are going to be. You know, that's a, that's a smart cornerback. Yeah, definitely. I am really excited to see our receiving core this year too, Bob. Yeah. I think we've got some really, really great players. Martavis Bryant is, he's a new man. He has some renewed sense of football. Um, I think he's got a renewed sense of confidence and he's in a place where he wants to be. He didn't want to be in Pittsburgh anymore. He wasn't going to get first team reps anymore. I mean, come on, you're behind Antonio Brown and then Juju Smith Schuster comes off the draft. Like it's like a bullet. And if you already have problems with your coaching and, and you've already had a rift with people on the team, then uh, yeah, you're going to, you're going to be the last one that they, they put on the field. So <laughs> definitely princess, you got to start watching more football. Yeah. It's good for you. It's important this season. I expect 16 games out of you. All 16. <laughs> Worth watching. The Raiders are going to be much better this year. I am not giving them a super high grade yet because I like to be underestimated, <laughs> Me too. which is great. It's great. It's fine. So the kickoff rule. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. But I don't like a lot of the rules that they're making that they're changing. I like that they changed the the catch rule. That's great because I think it'll eliminate a lot of questions, but I I don't know why the kickoff rule needed to be changed. I'm so confused about it. All they're doing is like spreading it out more and shortening the field. Well, what is the difference between four? I don't even get it. You get you get more gunners if um, so. So essentially, they they have a five by five alignment as opposed to four players on each side of the ball. They have five oh. players on each side of the ball, but these five players have to line up within a, a a yard of the line of scrimmage of the kickoff line. 
So it's not last five year, yards, it's one? Yes. Last oh year, they were able to line up five yards behind, which gives them a running start. I think it's a better option. You line up at one yard, what are you doing? You're just, I don't know. You're giving the team I it, more, oh. Okay. I, I guess it does give you a better, um, a better chance of getting like an onside kick. And that would be, that would be the only benefit I can see. I have my little horn sticking up. I have. Horns. I know I had to paste mine down. <laughs> see, you get fashion, you get football. What more could you ask for? So let's touch up on one more thing and then we're going to end our show. Okay. The national anthem rules. Yeah, of course. Let's talk about that. So I guess right. they're saying that it's okay if the player is in the locker room, but if the player is on the field, they have to be standing up. Correct. And I can't, I can't really make a, a comment either way. I don't care. I don't care what they do, but it's the NFL's right to do that. One thing that we need to really clear up is the players do not have the right. It's not a First Amendment thing. The only First Amendment, um, uh, the, the only thing that the First Amendment does is it, it protects them from retribution or from um, any sort of response or punishment from the government, not from a private corporation. So it's the NFL's decision. It really exactly, is. But There's no such thing as freedom of speech when it comes to this, period. There's nothing. This is why Donald Trump can't make that, that comment about if, if they don't stand for the national anthem, they should be fired. They, he can't turn that into a law because that's what the First Amendment says. But the NFL can. That's their, it's their decision. It's their choice. It's their rights, yeah. but I seriously don't know why it was a big issue to begin with. I don't either. When, you, when a fallen soldier dies, what do you do to give him respect? You get on one knee and you bow down. It's not, mm -hmm. I, it's just an, uh, it's a controversy uh, topic, but I just wanted to touch on that and just, yeah. It's bitching to bitch. Yep. <laughs> Let's be clear. Everybody has the right to do stuff that they want to do. They just have to face consequences for it. That's, that's it. And if your employer says, I don't want you doing this particular thing, I don't care if it's a political statement or not, then that's your choice. You can do it and p face the penalties or don't do it. But everybody has that, that decision to make outside of, um, outside of their work life. So like Colin Kaepernick, I can't do anything but respect him because he, he puts his money where his mouth is. He's literally put his money out there and paid for things, millions of dollars. And he sacrificed his entire career for this. That's the biggest deal. Right. Well, that is, that's the biggest thing. And most of the guys that kneeled last year, when they did it, they did it because they were pissed off because there was, you know, somebody bitching that they weren't, allowed to or they shouldn't be allowed to kneel it if you're gonna do it do it big 100 percent. get out there and show that you're supporting what colin kaepernick started right so mm -hmm. well i'm not a real particular per big person on politics and that sort of thing so i try not to be it's really really difficult <laughs> It's really <laughs> difficult to deal with people these days. So anyways. I just wanted to touch on that because it sort of is a big deal because a lot of people, I'm sorry, are still throwing away their NFL gear and saying, fuck you. Yeah. That's just, that is, it's like, you might as well burn your money because. Right? <laughs> why didn't you just sell it? Yeah. There, the, yeah. Why didn't you sell it? eBay works great, right? You can even sell stuff on Amazon now if you're a private person. Seriously. So, uh, uh, Danny, what will he do when he runs out of cash? He's never going to run out of cash. You know why? He is the face of a movement. Somebody, people are going to give him money. People are going to donate. People are going to help him with that cause. 
So I don't think he'll ever run out. And if he wins his collusion case against the NFL, he's going to have more than enough money. <laughs> right. He'll be fine. And Michael's right. The person that told Kaepernick that it was respectfully okay to kneel at the national anthem was a soldier. Mm -hmm. And so. many soldiers, like, like you said, and I actually, I, um, one of my friends was over visiting yesterday. His name is Maceo and he's a black man. And I bring that up for this reason. He has a very different perspective and things are, you know, things are different for him than they are for me, a white woman. So he actually brought up that, uh, that particular point that when you're kneeling something, you're doing that in deference, you're doing that in honor and you're, you're showing respect. So regardless of, of what it looked like, he was not being disrespectful to soldiers. Give the man a break. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Just give him a break. So give him the benefit of the doubt. He's not hating on people. Let's not hate on people. It's getting old. Right? Really? We love, love each other. That's all we're trying to do. Love football. Bye, princess. Football. <laughs> all right. All right well, we're going to wrap cover? it up. I hope you guys enjoyed our show. Stay tuned. It's going to get better. I'm in the process of packing and moving, so... And it's yeah. off season, so right now sucks. I know. It's really not hard. It's, it's hard to find stuff to talk about. <laughs> I know. It's definitely so. difficult. <laughs> Stay tuned. Well, anyways, you guys have a blessed weekend. And always keep Thanks, it Raiders. Donation.